Man, all right, so I've tried to record this video like three, four times already, but um, I just like to call it practice whenever that happens. Um, anyway, what's going on guys? My name is Matt. Welcome to The Office, where we discuss tech and the world around it. I haven't done a tech talk or commentary type video in a while. I don't know, I just been really trying to focus on you know the typical YouTube stuff you know making videos that um, you guys really want to listen to uh, or watch uh, so if you guys like more commentary st style videos from me where I'm just talking about tech and maybe throw up some news articles let me know because uh, that's what I'm gonna do today I just got in the mood and I just felt like you know sitting down and talking with you guys about what's going on because um, I'm not sure everybody really knows about this stuff and I haven't done a let's talk about it in a very long time and uh, so if you want let's talk about it to be a running series that I do on this channel give me a thumbs up let me know I am currently in a phase right now where I am trying to figure out how I can give you guys great content great value on a weekly basis on a weekly basis at least um, I have a daytime job but I also love doing YouTube but I have a lot of videos I want to do, a lot of products I want to talk about. Um, right now I'm working on a Room for Improvement series where I am actually improving my office space based on my workflow so that I can, you know, come in here, sit down and just create. Um, I talked about it in episode one, episode two, I talk about organizing things. Um, episode one is a tour, by the way. Um, but the series has a playlist, so I'm going to link it up here as well as episode three will probably be out and you're seeing a little preview of it. Um, episode three will be out very soon. I'm still finishing up a couple last touches, but episode three is about the walls. Uh, I've been talking about decorating the walls and kind of really filling out the office space because that's something that I think is very important to really, um, you know, get your creative juices flowing, um, get you motivated to create more and stay consistent. Uh, as you can see, I got a couple cool things behind me um, that are very special to me. So uh, let's get into the video, man. I want to talk about the exposure notification API. So um, some time ago when corona coronavirus attacked, you know, everybody knows this pandemic has been going on. Uh, but just long story short, uh, Apple and Google have recently put in their latest software updates to Android and iOS phones, what is called an exposure notification API. And what that is, is that is an API that allows users to voluntarily report that they have that they have a coronavirus. And what this will do is use the Bluetooth in your phone to anonymously connect to different phones so that other people can be alerted if they are near you. So this is what is called contact tracing. So, man, it's one of those things where contact tracing is something that's very important in stopping the spread, but I'm not even going to lie. As a tech enthusiast, as somebody who is not considered a like techno-skeptic, like, I love technology. I really give technology the benefit of the doubt, but this is kind of scary because you know those tile trackers that people can buy to, you know, you stick them to things or you put them inside things so you can track them. But when you buy a tile tracker, you create an account with Tile, right? And what that does is it uses Bluetooth in your phone to help locate your tile tracker. In a sense, it's kind of the same as contact tracing. The difference is, is that the contact tracing API, the exposure notification API, actually allows states to communicate together to help identify people who have volunte voluntarily told this exposure notification API that they can have access to their health data. Um, I'm not sure every state department is going to be different. They all have they all have apps that you have to download that can utilize that API. And, you know, aside from maybe a possible hit to your battery, which I'm thinking, I'm assuming because it's going to always be running. Um, I think that it's a good thing. The problem is it is kind of freaky that 
it says voluntarily, but who knows what they're doing with that data? I mean, they already kind of use it. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, free Wi-Fi at stores, Bluetooth beacons in stores. They're already using your phone to determine statistics like how long you stand in front of a particular end cap or how long you are in the store period or what route you take when you're in the store so they can help you they can use that data to design the store better they know where you go first they know how long you stood in front of something um, one time I actually stood in front of you know something and I got home and I started seeing ads about it and I never mentioned it never said anything verbal about it never took a picture about it never texted anybody never searched for it nothing so that's how I knew you know that's how I knew that it's pretty uh, it's pretty accurate so with that being said contract tracing is a big deal um, several states are going online this week it is going to help stop it but still very creepy um, that's all I have to say about that but what do you guys think about that man mention it um, let's talk about it down below I mean how do you feel about that are you gonna participate in it if you caught coronavirus would you voluntarily give that information up? I want to know so Apple is being sued again by Epic Games this time and this is over some anti-competitive practices that Apple has with their App Store they are frequently under attack because of their policy on you know collecting that 30 percent um, which is kind of industry standard um, from what I've done some quick research because I, I actually was curious to know what other app stores are charging and the Google Play Store is actually charging 30% um, and I looked up Steam that also charges 30% but um, it looks like a lot of situations with them a lot of contracts with them are negotiable I'm pretty sure there's probably something going on with Apple and Google that they just don't talk about they just kind of put on like a strong front that they don't have any type of um, arrangement um, because what Epic Games is doing right now is, you know, pun intended, epic. Like they put out a smear campaign in the actual Fortnite game. Google has also removed them from the Play Store. And at the end of the day, Epic makes a lot of money. They just want more money. And Apple makes a lot of money and they just want to keep that money. Um, it's all business. Um, at the end of the day, I don't have a problem with it personally because I don't play these games. I could see that if I was an iPhone user and I played Fortnite and I also played on PC or PS4 or Xbox and I could buy, you know, points or, or whatever in-game currency for cheaper on those consoles or those platforms than my mobile phone. However, the other side of it for me is that Apple has built a really, really, really tight ecosystem and it's the one that customers want to be on. So. At the end of the day, Apple has a lot of control over everything, but they've, they're doing a good job handling it. Um, it's just, it just sucks sometimes. Stuff like this is like annoying because there's other stuff going on in the world and this is what we're dealing with. It's more greed at the end of the day. It's, um, you know, I get it, it's business, but I mean, boy, I wish it could not happen. Just other stuff is going on. I mean, the freaking Canon R5 is blowing up in this planet now it's just catching a lot of heat pun intended again dad joke um i don't get it man like the r5 is probably the next camera i'm gonna get because i'm a photographer first i use the eos r to record videos like this but i mean right now i really don't really don't have a reason to shoot 8k however the fact that I can't even do 4k 120 that, that hurts right there that, that makes me so angry because literally I came to Canon I got rid of my Sony a6400 because I got tired of the menu system I was at the point where I had a crop sensor you know camera and I was ready to go full frame but I was like if I'm gonna go full frame I'm gonna have to go in on get on glass. So I was like, if I'm gonna go full frame, let me try some other things first. You know what I mean? Let me make sure I'm doing my due diligence. So that's when I picked up the EOS R and the ergonomics and the simplicity of the menu and the touchscreen. 
it was like, yes, I gotta have this EOS R. But then it was like the glass. The glass is so great, but it's so expensive. I mean, every every RF lens for the Canon EOS R and R5, R6, RP, RA, all of those R line cameras, they're all like two thousand dollars. The L glass. Now the 35 millimeter, which is what I mostly use, is like 500 bucks, and they they actually announced a 85 millimeter. Um, that thing's gonna be like six, seven hundred bucks. I'm sorry if I got the price wrong. I will throw it up on the screen. Um, but it's not that much more. I think it's maybe 800 bucks. Hey, let's just say 800 bucks. Um, but there's another eight, 85 millimeter 1.2 that, um, oh, man, it's expensive. It's like $2,800. So if this $800 lens is even 75% of the quality of the L glass, I'm getting that that $800, 85, I think it's a 1.8, 1.4. I gotta get my, I gotta get my specs straight, man. I'm sorry. I'm freestyling it right now because um, it's been a while since I just talked to you guys and geeked out um, about technology in general. But so the e, the EOS R5 is is getting hot. It has, it's having overheating issues because it seems like it's a software issue. People are kind of pointing towards a hardware issue. I don't know yet. Um, Canon will be introducing some new functionality in the next update. Uh, I think they're bringing like C-Log3, which is some additional stops, uh, which is going to be welcome for any cinematographers out there. I'm not there yet, but I'm sure there's somebody else geeking out about that. Um, there's supposed to be some additional um, changes that are going to allow more record time. Uh, we don't know if that is you know, putting the camera more at risk just for the sake of not having to recall these items, items, these cameras, um, I'm not sure. Um, I, I think that this is gonna help the representation, the, the, this is gonna help the rep reputation uh, for you know being a fast follower and, and getting these, these updates out. However, I think that a lot of people are hyped about the A7 III right now. I think it's one of those things where, man, Canon, took their time and then they put out the EOS R and even the EOS R is crippled. I mean, I could not get 4K like this, what you're seeing right now. I could not get 4K until I got that 15 to 35 because of that crop in 4K. Like this angle that you're getting right now is essentially like, just watch this, hold on, watch this. That's 35, that's what I was getting. Matter of fact, I was getting 35 and 1 1.2, 1.4 crop. See what I'm saying? Let me let me lean up some. I'm sound better when I lean up. Let me lean up a little bit better. I'm still getting too lazy. Let me get something to drink. Hold on. All right. So I don't know, man. Like everything about the EOS R5 is what I want. Um, fast uh, um, frames per second uh, in the photography modes um, I'm not gonna get too specky on you guys um, it's not much that it's not much more than what I have aside from the video features so that's why right now I'm not like pressed to get it I do want to when the studio is built out completely I do want to have a second RF body um, so I'm thinking about picking up like a RP or EOS R or maybe even using this and then getting the R5 at some point so use this as a B cam so that I can do like some top down shots with another high quality camera and not an iPhone. Um, the biggest problem that I have right now is that if I want to do videos on my iPhone, I'm going to have to use my camera. If I want to do videos on both, if I need both in the video, what do I record with? So I'm hoping at some point, um, you know, business picks up, you know, like I said, I have a uh, creative company called Liquid Sun Creative and um, when business picks up and I get more gear, um, we'll, we'll see what that does for the YouTube. But I definitely want to um, make my purchases, you know, meaningful. And if it doesn't get me, you know, if I can't talk about it on my YouTube channel, like it doesn't it doesn't fit into my journey as a photographer, uh, then I probably won't make the upgrade. I mean, I'm, I'm slowly building out this office finally the way I want to. And. It's making me really think about what I want to do and how I'm going to shoot everything. 
because I want to be able to walk in this office and just go, just create. Like today I was sitting there and I was like, man, uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about technology, but I couldn't because I came in here and I had to set everything up. And then by the time I set everything up, a battery was dead on my, my microphone. I actually have the microphone plugged into a battery pack right now because it was dead, you know, and I tried to charge it fast enough, but I couldn't. Um, but you get my point. Things just aren't ready when I'm ready. And if I get off work and I have an hour to do a video before a photo shoot or before something else, I just want to go. Um, so I appreciate everybody's time. And that's all I really wanted to talk about today. Um, exposure notification API. Are you going to sign up for it? Are you going to sign up for it? If you get COVID-19, are you going to sign up for that? I, I'm curious. I don't know, man. Um, also, Apple getting attacked. I mean, they seem to, you know, have enough to fight off lawsuits left and right. I think they're going to get a settlement. Epic is. Uh, Spotify just joined in too. Forgot to mention that. They joined in. They've always been going after Apple because, I mean, Spotify is paying. Apple is making so much money off Spotify. Oh my gosh. It's ridiculous. Um, what else? Um, of course, the R5. I don't know why I just forgot that. Yeah, the R5. Um, we'll see. We'll see if this firmware fixes it. Um, I'm hoping it does, and we'll see um, what the YouTubers and the creators and you know what the news outlets say about the performance after it's done. Hey, I appreciate you guys watching. Um, thanks for your time. If you guys have any questions or want to chop it up, let me know down below. Also, the links to all my social accounts are in the description. Um, definitely follow me on Twitter and Instagram. That's where I post a lot of my photography on Instagram as well as you know some short blog posts as well as uh, my twitter is where i just you know conversate so i'll see you guys in the next video stay up